the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. And, and how uh, we can go ahead and, and make things happen. Amen. All right. All right. So this is the job. So that's making funny. So he's going home to the Lord. I put it in and say, we die daily. We. Because we are the body of Christ. Amen. And we die daily because we got to sit there and move ourselves out of the way so the Holy Spirit can have his way. He said, so that we can conform to the image of the Son. See? We're made in the image of God. Jesus Christ is the express image of God. Because of our fall with Adam, we need to be conformed back, transformed by the renewal of our minds to the things of God. So that's why we, we, we have to die daily, meaning die to ourselves, and start to be more manifested or allow the Holy Spirit to work through us to do the things that God wants us to do. And I think it's important. I know it's important. And I think we need to sit there and try to learn the importance of conforming to the image of the sea. So one of the things I want to sit there, uh, let me see if I put the right, put it up here at the beginning. Hey, hey man, I, I did have it at the beginning. Let me see here. Come on now, brother. Taylor, let's get this thing right. First Corinthians 15, starting in verse 26. It says here, the last enemy that shall be destroyed is death. For he has put all things, who? Jesus. He has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, which did put all things under him. And when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him, God, to put all things under him, that God may be all in all. Right? Else what shall they do which are baptized for the dead, if the dead raise not all? Why are they then baptized for the dead? And why stand we in jeopardy every hour? I protest by the rejoicing which I have in Christ Jesus, our, our Lord, I die daily. <clears throat> and that's one of the things that we do. That's what the subject talking about. I die daily. We die daily. We die to the old man so that the new man can be renewed. Amen. We die daily. Not physical death. And that's probably why the world sometimes gets confused on us, right? Because we're sitting there trying to, to, to talk about uh, something else when God has said, no, no, when I'm clean, I want you to die daily. I want you to die to yourself. I want you to die, I want your selfishness to God so that you can rise up and be who God calls you to be. Be a reflection of Him. So people can see Him. The more we can sit there and die daily, uh, spiritually, there you go. Make sure you ain't getting caught in no mind. It. We're not talking about it. We're talking about spiritually. So we talk about that daily. We talk about dying to self and allowing the Holy Spirit to form us. And that's where he, that's what he wants us to be. So he said in here, John 14, verse 4. And whether I go, ye know. And the way you know. This is Jesus talking to his disciples and those who are listening to him. And let me make sure I put my. Um, all right, go back to this again. He says here in John 14 4, and where thy go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not where thou goest. And how can we know the way? Now, this one of the disciples, and it's, it's a fair question, 
They're saying this, we don't, we don't know where you're going. Show us the way, right? Jesus said in verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, <laughs> the truth, and the light. No man cometh to the Father but by me. That's critical for everybody. See, we can't get, you know, the reason I, uh, we talk about even with uh, people who want to go back to the law, you know, or people who want to live under the law and sit there and say, repent because you got to go in under the law. Listen, the law show as a schoolmaster and it also shows that none of us can fulfill the law and always some of us sit there and say well i'm trying it ain't about trying it's 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 about trying to do something that you know in your flesh you can't do a lot of cases we try to go by the law now many of you want to sit there and say they can go you can go by the law i'm telling you right now you have failed the bible says that if you miss one point of the law you miss it all. There's no, there's no partial piece of the law. You do it or you don't. The wages of sin is death. The transgressions of the law is death. And you know, a lot of cases, these people that back in Jerusalem, they used to sit there and, and do blood sacrifices to cover their sins. That's not even happening. And some people sit there and, and try to use Jesus to cover the sin, but they don't want to do everything that Jesus said. They don't want to use what the Bible says. They don't want the fact is that he gave a command to love one another. But some people will sit there and say, no, that, that, that part I, I, don't, I don't receive. But I do receive the fact is that I don't have no other way to cover my transgression. And the fact is that if you're going to live by the law, you got to do everything by the law. You got to follow the law. You need your blood sacrifice and all that other stuff that you used to do in the temple. And you need to go back to Jerusalem. You need to go and buy, go to those, those those festivals they have and and, and, and and go back to the temple. If the temple ain't built, you need to uh, just go back to Jerusalem and, and, and be where the temple is if that's what you want to do. But the law, number y'all can do. So the way is to Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to God except by Jesus Christ. Amen. Verse 7. If you had known me, Ye should have known my father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. This is a very critical statement right there. I used to look at that and say, well, of course, that's Jesus Christ, right? So if you see Jesus, you see the Father, right? Look what Jesus said. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. It suffices us. See, looking at Jesus, right? <laughs> Jesus said, you've seen them. And he said, show them. Philip, Philip is being just like the rest of us, being real, saying, show us the Father. Verse 9, Jesus said unto him, have I been, listen to what he said, have I been so long with you, and yet has thou not known me? Whoa, man, he's trying to sit there and say, you want to see the Father? You've been with me so long, have you not known me? He said, he that has seen me has seen the Father. And how says thou then, show us the Father? Jesus said, if you've seen me, you have seen the Father. How do you say, show me the Father? Jesus is sitting there saying this, I am a manifestation of the will and the word of God. Yes, I am the anointed one, but guess what? You will be anointed too, amen? And get you both a bear and conform to the image of the, of the dear son so that when people see, they can see Jesus in you, not your flesh. That's what Philip was trying to do. Philip was trying to say, I want to see God. I want to see God in the flesh. And he said, Philip, It's the, it's the inward peace. It's the inward that makes who God is and he that dwells in you. Amen? So look what it says. So show, when, when Philip says, show us the Father. And he, Jesus said, how do you say, you've been with me long enough, how are you going to sit there and say, show you the Father? He said in verse 10, believest thou not that I'm in the Father? Look at it. Jesus said, believe not that thou, believe not that thou, that I'm in the Father? He said, you don't believe that? And the Father in me? Come on now. 
Jesus sitting there saying, I'm in the Father, the Father in me. Jesus sitting there saying, I see the covenant, so the covenant be in you. The covenant is the Holy Spirit in you. Huh? So people, if they be with you long enough, they'll sit there and see the Holy Spirit because you allow yourself to die daily so the Holy Spirit can sit there and transform you. Transform you to the things of God. Amen. That's what God is trying to say. He says here, he said, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself. And that's one of the things about God daily is that you don't speak of yourself, you speak of him. Hallelujah. You speak of the Father. Hallelujah. You speak of Jesus. Hallelujah. You speak of him, not of you. And that's when we get all track, off track because we start speaking about ourselves. Start being mindful about ourselves instead of being mindful of him. Mindful of who he is in us. Hallelujah. Look at this. He said, but the Father that dwells in me, he does it the work. And that's one of the things I've died to self or die daily is the fact is that it's not you. That's what God is trying to tell us. Get off of you. Every time you put it on you, you all you do is try to buff yourself, build yourself up, and it's not about you. You didn't die for nobody. <laughs> and it wouldn't have worked if you did. Hallelujah. But he did. And all he's trying to tell us is to sit there and move and die to self. And allow the Holy Spirit to be manifested through you to others. He does the work. We didn't let them learn to, to let him do the work in us. Amen. Watch this in, in Romans 12 1. And in the subtitle, it's called Living Sacrifice. And it says right here, as a living sacrifice, right? He says, verse 1 12. Chapter uh, Romans 12, verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present yourself, that you present your body as a living sacrifice, holy, what? And acceptable to God. Not to man. It's a lot of cases we get in part that man pleasing stuff that we forget that we're supposed to please God. That's what we want to do, is learn to please God. And as long as we get to the point where we can please God, we can do all things through Christ who speaks us out. We gotta learn to, 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 to do and do things that are acceptable to God. Stop trying to be, and, and, and I'm, I'm telling you, stop trying to be acceptable by man. Don't, don't be, don't, don't try to be acceptable and then to do the uh, approval of man. Because when you do that, all you're doing is, is jacking yourself up. You need to be able to do that with the acceptable and pleasing to God. You see what I'm saying there? Verse 1 again. I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Your reasonable service is to be accepted by God. Not man. A lot of cases, all we want to do, people want to sit there and, and validate you. Stop allowing people to validate you. Stop trying to be validated by people. People don't determine what you call to do. People don't determine who you are. People don't determine where you go to heaven or hell. They don't. Nobody do. Just for God. Amen. And Jesus said, I'm pointing away so you don't have to worry about death. Don't, don't, don't let people do that. He said, they got to worry about themselves. But I've been talking about judge not. And you shall not be judged. So you try, remember, conforming to him and understanding is his salvation. Being approved by God is where we want to be approved by God, man. That's why we die daily, so we can be approved by God. We're not talking about physical death, so those that are cardinal-minded, you got to come off the cardinal part and start being on the spiritual part, because that's what I'm talking That's what I'm talking about. His words are spirit, his word is life. And the fact is that we're supposed to conform to this image. He says that's a reasonable service, right? And then he says right here, verse 2, and be, listen to this, and be not conformed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of 
your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God and don't let somebody else be the person that tells you that you're doing the will of God or not doing the will of God. You work and have a relationship with God Almighty so that you know that you're pleasing him. You know, I like that in the Hebrews 11, 6, it says, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You're not going to find him by sitting there trying to please people. We don't want you to be called to please people. People are the ones that you, that's the reason somebody came to Christ because of people, because of the world. How the world treats you, how the world rejects you, how the world gangs up on you, how the world wants to sit there and circle and draw blood from you. That's what the world does. The world wants to keep you under their feet when God sit there and say, I am your head. And that's the only one that you need to focus on. Focus on me. Baby. That's what God wants you to do. Focus on him. You want to please him. And Jesus is the way and the Holy Spirit is your God. That's why he's saying you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead. Thou shall be saved by God, not by me. Not by me. Please don't. Go. Oh, please. I, I'm asking all you pastors, please equip the saints to do the work of the ministry so that they do the right thing and not get caught up in trying to please man. Let them know that it's not about you trying to control them because you're not supposed to do that. That's not, please, please, I know, maybe sometimes you don't think you're doing that, but if they're focused more on you and then focus on the word of God and the will of God, if they're focused on pleasing you instead of pleasing God, if they're focused on the fact that they can't hear from God because you're not allowing them and teaching them that it's a personal relationship, that whatever you say is not what matters but what he says, Teaching them the word of God, preaching the word of God. Your opinion is your opinion, my opinion is my opinion, but you got to get them to understand that it's his will that matters. And anytime I, your opinion, my opinion gets away from his will, that's when people have problems. That's when people fall. And we got to get people to understand it's a personal relationship. The pastors and ministers, fivefold minister gifts. Let's not let our congregation get to the point that when they see God, that they won't hear these words. Is I never knew you. You probably knew you work in the neck of God. I never knew you. You knew your pastor. You knew the congregation. You knew your parents. You knew your children. You knew them, but you didn't know me. And I need to know you. And you need to know me. That's what God wants us to do. We need to get to that point of understanding that we have to equip the saints to focus on him. Focus on him. Learn who he is because he is the one that rewards us, especially with eternal life. You know that's what we want, to make sure we stay focused on eternal life in Christ Jesus. If we don't do that, then what's the point? None of us, no man here, no man, no pastor, no five minutes to give, no prophet, no evangelist. They can't give eternal life. You know that. Make sure they know that. And make sure that you're pointing to them the way of Jesus Christ. Let them know that they're trying to please God, not you. Please, that's, I'm please asking you to do that. Make sure people know. I, may, I know that you don't think you're doing that, but make sure they know that it's not about pleasing man. It's not about pleasing the group. It's about pleasing him. And you preach the gospel. Teach them the word of God. Equip the saints to do the work of the ministry. I'm asking that. I'm begging that because that's what God wants us to do, is to go and preach the gospel. And if you're doing that, great. And all those who are listening, if, 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 if you're, you're, you're basically doing, please seek to please God, great. That's what I need you to do. That's what God needs you to do. That's what God calls you to do. So that you can equip and do the work of the ministry, bring other people into the calling of God. Amen. Now, look at this here. Uh